Good morning and welcome to the Jerusalem Baptist Church. It's great to see you all here again, virtually that is. And we're so excited about the Word of God this morning because it's sharper than a two-edged sword. You know, you just get that idea of like a lightsaber, just just cutting straight through and getting to the heart of the matter. And here in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 5, we read, if you like, about the sons and the daughters of light. See, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 5 says, You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath. It's so good, folks, to be known, to know that you are loved, that you are saved by the true and the living God. And the Apostle Paul says these words to us here in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 5 in the context of him talking about Jesus coming back. And Jesus is going to come back like a thief in the night. You don't know when he's going to break in and steal you away and take you home to glory. None of us know the day or the hour or the time when Jesus is coming back. But we know it will be in the twinkling of an eye. It will be so quick. And in these days that, that, we're, that we're living in and the days that are approaching, they're going to get darker and darker, more and more troublesome. And I say, hallelujah, praise the Lord, because that means God's going to be pouring more of his Holy Spirit out. Because we need, would need more of the Holy Spirit to confront the darkness and to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so here in our passage, Paul is saying to us, you are the sons of light. You are the daughters of light. He's saying you are the children of light. Praise God. I tell you what, have you ever noticed... Um, Sometimes when we're sleeping there in Africa and you might hear a little scurrying across the floor and uh, you, you turn the light on and, it, and there are those, um, what do you call them, the cockroaches. And as soon as you turn the light on, the cockroaches, they, they run and they hide because they love the darkness. But for us as the children of light, as the children of God, we shine in this world brightly for the Lord. And sin and the devil, they fear that light. And of course, they run because they love their darkness. But we who are born of God's Spirit, we love the Father God. We love the light of God because God's light gives us direction. And we know that as the sons of light, we reflect something of the character and the nature of God. And God's glory, it shines out of us. Where's my button? There's my button. Interesting, oh, I don't know. I've got a, must be the next church walk that's cropped up on the mountain. We're off to Thessalonica. We're going to start at Antioch, make our way through Iconium, Troas, and up there to Thessalonica. So get your walking boots ready. We're going to do one of Paul's second missionary journeys, it looks like. Only joking. But that would be good fun. That would be pretty cool. But anyway, one John, I've got to concentrate. One John... 1 verse 5 says, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Therefore, everyone who has fellowship with God is in the light. If you have fellowship with God, you are in the light. 
And you get into the light by being washed from your sin by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If he has cleansed you, then you have a legal access into the presence of God and you walk in his light. No, John confirms this as he, as he goes on in 1 John 1 verses 6 to 7. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Isn't that Wow, a wow verse because what we're noticing here is if we are cleansed with the blood if we're in the light then our relationships with one another will improve because we're fellowshipping with God and as we fellowship with God that relationship with the Lord it begins to affect us and how we relate to other people and we relate to other people as God relates to us because he is the biggest influence upon our lives and that radically transforms us and radically brings families back together as we spend time in the light of Christ but if you're in darkness and you're in sin you can't fellowship with God and there will be disunity and conflict and division within families. You can, only have a, you can only have a form of religiousness if you're not in the light of God. God who is light wants fellowship, not religious pretending. And if we're in fellowship with God, true fellowship, then we're truly in the light and therefore we are the children of light. Fellowship there in 1 John 1 verse 6, it means a partnership. It's a spiritual fellowship, a spiritual partnership, a spiritual sharing together. We share our lives and what is on our hearts and minds our, our joys, our hopes and our disappointments with Father God. But in return, he shares with us what is on his heart, what, what, is, what he delights in, what his will is, what he wants done. How much time do we actually spend enjoying God, delighting in him, being with our Heavenly Father? Now, if you want to partner and share in the things of God, then away with sin and come into the light by the blood of Christ. We are so spiritually rich, there are not enough bags to put those riches in. We are so blessed, there is not enough warehouses to store all the blessings of God. As Christ places us into the light so that we may have fellowship with the Father of lights. James 1 verse 7. And Jesus, he is light as well. And Jesus, he is the light of the world. See, it tells us in, in John chapter 1. Nope, that's the wrong one. <laughs> it tells us in John chapter 1. Jesus came into the world as light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things come into being through Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Hallelujah! 1 John 1 verses 1 to 4 in him was life that's Jesus and the life was the light of men notice the three components here word life and light because Jesus is the word 
life is in him and he is the light of men and women hence we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus to practice the truth to walk in the light and have fellowship with God the Father to have partnership to have a sharing time to have a sacred relationship with Father God through the Lord Jesus Christ we are so so blessed as God calls us to come out of darkness and into his marvelous light I love this phrase in 1 Peter 2 verse 9 but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light see the apostle peter reveals that god the father calls us from darkness into a marvelous light excuse me a minute Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful cup of coffee. See, Peter reveals that God the Father has called us from darkness into his marvellous light. When God the Father calls here, it refers that he is calling you loudly. It's in a loud voice. It is clear. It is distinctive. When God calls you, you know it. You cannot mistake it. It may cause you to tremble in, in, inside. You, because God is so powerful. And it's like, whoa, the God of the universe is speaking to me. The God of all creation is calling me. And you see, when he calls you, he invites you. He summons you into his presence, into his marvellous light. God invites you, my friends, into something marvellous, into something so wonderful. And here the word marvellous is used in a dramatic sense of wonder, a dramatic sense of awe. It's an all-invoking sight that moves the beholder's deepest emotions. You, my friend, may have a heart like a swinging brick, but when the Lord calls you, He softens your heart, He gives you a new heart, and He moves you in your deepest emotions as you are called from darkness into a marvellous light. See, light here is the phos in Greek, and it refers here to God's self-existent life. Divine illumination to reveal and impart life through Jesus. And it can also refer to fiery light, or to many lights. So God, he speaks, if you like, out of the light. That is, emanating outwards, out of God. And this light is shining out of him, his glory radiating out of him. And his voice loudly comes towards you, calling you to come out of the darkness and into the light. You are summoned into the presence of Almighty God. And we must enter into the light of Almighty God and we must leave our darkness and our obscurity that sin holds us in behind. You know, Jesus our Lord said in St. Matthew's Gospel chapter 6 verse 23 but if your eyes are unhealthy your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great 
is that darkness. If a dark light is in you, you cannot see where you are going spiritually. You will be deceived. You will stumble. You will be in confusion. You will be blinded. You will be in obscurity, spiritually speaking. And sin and evil, it can look good. And it deceives you. So we don't see the danger that, are, that, that this dark light is leading us towards. Eventually, this dark light will lead us to the abyss of the book of Revelation. Hence, we must turn, we must run, we must flee from the darkness of sin and evil that corrupts and deceives us into thinking we're okay, we've got it pretty good, so therefore we're, we're all right. And we run to Father God, the Father of lights, who is calling us out of darkness into a marvellous light that is overwhelming, powerful light, where we see clearly. You just imagine when you get there, up into the glory, and you stand before God, and His light or like going right through you, it's so penetrating. Highlighting everything. You know, when we step into the light of Christ, we discover who we are. And we discover who God is. And what His Son, the light of the world, has done for us. So we may come into the marvellous light of God the Father and feast with Him. And we come into the light. By the blood and the power, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. So, my friends, it is no small thing for Paul the Apostle to call the babes, the young Christians in the faith in Thessalonica, sons of light, daughters of light, children of light. And if you're a son, a daughter of light, then we are most blessed. That we have been called, summoned, into a marvellous light. And I don't know about you, but as I read this, I want to go further in. I want to go higher up. I want to go much, much deeper into the light of our Heavenly Father. I want to enter by the blood of the Lamb in fear and in trembling. And yet in confidence as Christ has got me and leads me to the Father. And even though I may stumble before a holy God, He is kind and compassionate and forgiving and full of grace and full of mercy. And He is quick to give us His light, His leading, His guiding and to reveal his glory. But that's not the end. Because we see here Paul goes on, and you see he gives us a responsibility. If we have fellowship with him, then verse 6 says, Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. We are to conduct our lives in the way that Jesus and the apostles would have lived. We allow our new character, we allow our new identity in Jesus Christ to shape us and to mould us. And we do not let sin and darkness and the diabolos take us captive again. We're not ignorant of, of the devil's schemes, of the devil's wiles. See, we are vigilant and we don't fall into his traps that he sends, sends because the light of Christ exposes the work of the enemy. We are also sober, that is, we're not intoxicated. 
we are sober also means here we are free from illusion. We are free from some hallucination. In the light, we are presence of mind. We know what is going on around us and we walk by faith. <clears throat> we know that Satan is the God of this world. That this world is as beautiful as it looks. You know, the, the, the sin and the decay that is all around, that is multiplying and increasing. We walk in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because we're in the light, we have a clear discernment. We have a clear judgment. We have self-control. We are not irrational. And we walk in a world keeping ourselves pure for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is the bridegroom returning for the bride, his church. We keep ourselves pure and holy and unspotted from the world because we know something of the marvellous, overwhelming power of the light of the Father God because He has chosen us and called us to be the children of light. So I challenge you this day, how bright is your light? And how bright that light shines depends on the grace and the mercy of God. It depends on the fellowship that you're having with God. It depends if you're compromising with the world. Don't let your light shine out grey, but let it shine out brightly for the Lord Jesus Christ with no compromise. Let us come out of darkness let us not compromise with sin and with the devil, but let us go forward in the power of the marvellous light of Christ, leading us, guiding us. His word is a light unto our path. The Lord Jesus is in our lives. We have fellowship with God the, the Father. We are the brightest people on the planet, folks, as we fellowship with our Lord. It should cause us to praise Him and to worship Him and to adore Him as we are in awe of what He has done for us. May we get to know our great Heavenly Father through the Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Wow, Father God, You are so awesome. You are amazing. And Lord, we stand in awe of you. And may the light of your truths shine deep within our hearts. Father, cut us off from all darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. May all sin be under the blood of Christ Jesus as we enter into the marvellous light of our Heavenly Father. Lord, surround our homes, our workplaces, our families, our hospitals, our communities, with your heavenly light. Lead us and guide us, we pray, and we thank you, Father, for the enlightenment of the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his hands of healing rest upon you and free you from all oppression and works of the enemy. May your joy be full, may your cup be overflowing, in the power of the Spirit of the living God. Amen. I forgot I got the zapper.